The Complete Works of William Shakespeare by William Shakespeare Act 4 Scene 1 Park The palace entered the king, Gloucester, Winchester, York, Suffolk, Somerset, Warwick, Talbot, Exeter, the governor of Paris, and others Gloucester. Lord Bishop set the crown upon his head. Winchester God save King Henry, of that name the sixth. Gloucester now, Governor of Paris, take your oath, Governor Niels, that you elect no other king but him, esteem none friends but such as are his friends, and none your foes but such as shall pretend malicious practices against his state. This shall ye do, so help you righteous God. Excellent Governor and his train enter S.I.R. John Fastolf Fastolf. My gracious Sovereign, as I rode from Calais, to haste unto your coronation, a letter was delivered to my hands, writ to your grace from T.H. Duke of Burgundy. Talbot. Shame to the Duke of Burgundy and thee. I vowed, base knight, when I did meet thee next to tear the garter from thy craven's leg, plucking it off, which I have done, because unworthily thou wast installed in that high degree. Pardon me, princely Henry, and the rest, this dastard, at the Battle of Patai, when but in all I was six thousand strong and that the French were almost ten to one, before we met, or that a stroke was given, like to a trusty squire did run away, in which assault we lost twelve hundred men, myself and divers gentlemen beside were there surpriced and taken prisoners. Then judge, great lords, if I have done amiss, or whether that such cowards ought to wear this ornament of knighthood yet or no. Gloucester. To say the truth, this fact was infamous and ill-beseeming any common man much more a knight, a captain, and a leader. Talbot. When first this order was ordained, my lords, knights of the garter were of noble birth, valiant and virtuous, full of haughty courage, such as were grown to credit by the wars, not fearing death nor shrinking for distress, but always resolute in most extremes. He then that is not furnished in this sword doth but usurp the sacred name of knight, profaning this most honorable order, and should, if I were worthy to be judge, be quite degraded, like a hedge-born swain that doth presume to boast of gentle blood. King Henry, stain to thy countrymen, thou hearest thy doom. Be packing, therefore, thou that wast a knight, henceforth we banish thee on pain of death. Exit fast off, and now, my lord protector, view the letter sent from our uncle Duke of Burgundy. Gloucester, viewing the superscription, what means his grace, that he hath charmed his style? No more but plain and bluntly to the king. Hath he forgot he is his sovereign? Or doth this churlish superscription pretend some alteration in goodwill? What's here? Reads I have, upon a special cause, and will with compassion of my country's wreck, together with the pitiful complaints of such as your oppression feeds upon, forsaken your pernicious faction, and joined with Charles the rightful king of France. O monstrous treachery! Can this be so that in alliance, amity, and oaths there should be found such false dissembling guile? King Henry. What? Doth my uncle Burgundy revolt? Gloucester. He doth, my lord, and is become your foe. King Henry. Is that the worst this letter doth contain? Gloucester. It is the worst, and all, my lord, he writes. King Henry. Why then, Lord Talbot, there shall talk with him, and give him chastisement for this abuse. How say you, my lord, are you not content? Talbot. Content, my liege. Yes, but that I am prevented, I should have begged I might have been employed. King Henry. Then gather strength and march unto him straight. Let him perceive how ill we brook his treason and what offense it is to flout his friends. Talbot. I go, my lord, and heart desiring still you may behold confusion of your foes. Exit enter Vernon and Bassett Vernon. Grant me the combat, gracious sovereign. Bassett. And me, my lord, grant me the combat too. York. This is my servant, hear him, noble prince. Somerset. And this is mine, sweet Henry, favor him. King Henry. Be patient, lords, and give them leave to speak. 
Say, gentlemen, what makes you thus exclaim, and wherefore crave you combat, or with whom? Vernon. With him, my lord, for he hath done me wrong. Bassett. And I with him, for he hath done me wrong. King Henry. What is that wrong whereof you both complain? First let me know, and then I'll answer you. Bassett. Crossing the sea from England into France, this fellow here, with envious carping tongue, upbraided me about the rose I wear, saying the sanguine color of the leaves did represent my master's blushing cheeks when stubbornly he did repugn the truth about a certain question in the law argued betwixt the Duke of York and him, with other vile and ignominious terms in confutation of which rude reproach and in defense of my lord's worthiness. I crave the benefit of law of arms. Vernon. And that is my petition, noble lord, for though he seem with forged quaint conceit to set a gloss upon his bold intent, yet no, my lord, I was provoked by him, and he first he. Okay exceptions at this badge, pronouncing that the paleness of this flower berayed the faintness of my master's heart. York. Will not this malice, Somerset, be left? Somerset. Your private grudge, my lord of York, will out though ne'er so cunningly you smother it. King Henry. Good Lord, what madness rules in brainsick men, when for so slight and frivolous a cause such factious emulations shall arise. Good cousins both, of York and Somerset, quiet yourselves, I pray, and be at peace. York. Let this dissension first be tried by fight, and then your highness shall command a peace. Somerset. The quarrel toucheth none but us alone. Betwixt ourselves let us decide it then. York. There is my pledge. Accept it, Somerset. Vernon. Nay, let it rest where it began at first. Bassett. Confirm it so, mine honorable lord. Gloucester. Confirm it so? Confounded be your strife, and perish ye, with your audacious prate. Presumptuous vassals, are you not ashamed with this immodest clamorous outrage to trouble and disturb the king and us? And you, my lords, methinks you do not well to bear with their perverse objections, much less to take occasion from their mouths to raise a mutiny betwixt yourselves. Let me persuade you take a better course. Exeter. It grieves his highness. Good my lords, be friends. King Henry. Come hither, you that would be combatants. Henceforth I charge you, as you love our favor, quite to forget this quarrel and the cause. And you, my lords, remember where we are, in France, amongst a fickle wavering nation. If they perceive dissension in our looks and that within ourselves we disagree, how will their grudging stomachs be provoked to willful disobedience and rebel? Beside, what infamy will there arise when foreign princes shall be certified that for a toy, a thing of no regard, King Henry's peers and chief nobility destroyed themselves and lost the realm of France. Oh, think upon the conquest of my father, my tender years, and let us not forego that for a trifle that was bought with blood. Let me be umpire in this doubtful strife. I see no reason, if I wear this rose, putting on a red rose, that any one should therefore be suspicious I am more inclined to Somerset than York. Both are my kinsmen, and I love them both. As well they may upbraid me with my crown, because, forsooth, the King of Scots is crowned. But your discretions better can persuade than I am able to instruct or teach, and therefore, as we hither came in peace, so let us still continue peace and love. Cousin of York, we institute your grace to be our regent in these parts of France. And good my lord of Somerset, unite your troops of horsemen with his bands of foot, and like true subjects, Sons of your progenitors, go cheerfully together and digest your angry collar on your enemies. Ourself, my lord protector, and the rest, after some respite, will return to Calais, from thence to England, where I hope ere long to be presented by your victories with Charles, Alonson, and that traitorous rout. Flourish. Exent all but York, Warwick, Exeter, Vernon Warwick. My lord of York, I promise you, the king prettily, Methought did play the orator. York. And so he did, but yet I like it not, in that he wears the badge of Somerset. Warwick. 
Tush, that was but his fancy. Blame him not. I dare presume, sweet prince, he thought no harm. York. And if I wist he did but let it rest, other affairs must now be managed. Exent all but Exeter, Exeter. Well didst thou, Richard, to suppress thy voice, for had the passions of thy heart burst out, I fear we should have seen deciphered their more rancorous spite, more furious raging broils, than yet can be imagined or suppository. But howsoer, no simple man that sees this jarring discord of nobility, this shouldering of each other in the court, this factious bandying of their favorites, but that it doth presage some ill event. Tis much when scepters are in children's hands, but more when envy breeds unkind division, there comes the ruin, there begins confusion. Exit Scene 2 France Before Bordeaux enter Talbot, with trump and drum Talbot. Go to the gates of Bordeaux, trumpeter, summon their general unto the wall. Trumpet sounds a parley. Enter, aloft, the general of the French, and others English John Talbot, Captains, calls you forth, servant in arms to Harry, King of England, and thus he would open your city gates, be humble to us, call my sovereign verse and do him homage as obedient subjects, and I'll withdraw me and my bloody power. But if you frown upon this proffered peace, you tempt the fury of my three attendants, lean famine, quartering steel, and climbing fire, who in a moment even with the earth shall lay your stately and air braving towers, if you forsake the offer of their love. General of the French Thou ominous and fearful owl of death, our nation's terror and their bloody scourge. The period of thy tyranny approacheth. On us thou canst not enter but by death, for, I protest, we are well fortified and street. Wrong enough to issue out and fight. If thou retire, the dauphin, well appointed, stands with the snares of war to tangle thee. On either hand thee there are squadrons pitched to wall thee from the liberty of flight, and no way canst thou turn thee for redress but death doth front thee with apparent spoil and pale destruction meets thee in the face. Ten thousand French have ta'en the sacrament to rive their dangerous artillery upon no Christian soul but English Talbot. Lo, there thou standst a breathing valiant man, of an invincible unconquered spirit. This is the latest glory of thy praise that I, thy enemy, do thee withal, for ere the glass that now begins to run finish the process of his sandy hour, these eyes that see thee now well colored shall see thee withered, bloody, pale, and dead. Drum afar off, hark! Hark! The dolphin's drum, a warning bell, sings heavy music to thy timorous soul and mine shall ring thy dire departure out. Exit Talbot. He fables not, I hear the enemy. Out some light horsemen, and peruse their wings. O oh, negligent and heedless discipline! How are we parked and bounded in a pale a little herd of England's timorous deer, mazed with a yelping kennel of French curs? If we be English deer, be then in blood, not rascal-like to fall down with a pinch, but rather— Moody mad and desperate stags, turn on the bloody hounds with heads of steel and make the cowards stand aloof at bay. Sell every man his life as dear as mine, and they shall find dear dear of us, my friends. God and St. George, Talbot and England's right, prosper our colors in this dangerous fight. Excellent Scene 3 Plains and Gascony enter York, with trumpet and many soldiers. A messenger meets him York. Are not the speedy scouts returned again that dogged the mighty army of the Dauphin? Messenger. They are returned, my lord, and give it out that he is marched to Bordeaux with his power to fight with Talbot. As he marched along, by your espials were discovered two mightier troops than that the Dauphin led, which joined with him and made their march for Bordeaux. York. A plague upon that villain Somerset that thus delays my promised supply of horsemen that were levied for this siege. Renowned Talbot doth expect my aid, and I am lauded by a traitor villain, and cannot help the noble chevalier. God comfort him in this necessity. If he miscarry, farewell wars in France. Enter S.I.R. William Lucy Lucy. Thou princely leader of our English strength, never so needful on the earth of France spur to the rescue of the noble Talbot, 
who now is girdled with a waste of iron and hemmed about with grim destruction. To Bordeaux, warlike Duke! To Bordeaux, York! Else, farewell Talbot, France, and England's honor. York! O oh God, that Somerset, who in proud heart doth stop my cornets, were in Talbot's place. So should we save a valiant gentleman by forfeiting a traitor and a coward. Mad ire and wrathful fury makes me weep that thus we die while remiss traitors sleep. Lucy. Oh, send some succor to the distressed lord. York. He dies, we lose, I break my warlike word. We mourn France smiles. We lose, they daily get all long of this vile traitor Somerset. Lucy. Then God take mercy on brave Talbot's soul, and on his son, young John, who two hours since I met in travel toward his warlike father. This seven years did not Talbot see his son, and now they meet where both their lives are done. York. Alas, what joy shall noble Talbot have to bid his young son welcome to his grave? Away! Vexation almost stops my breath, that sunred friends greet in the hour of death. Lucy, farewell. No more my fortune can but curse the cause I cannot aid the man. Maine, Blois, Poictiers, and Tours are one away long all of Somerset and his delay. Exit with forces, Lucy. Thus, while the vulture of sedition feeds in the bosom of such great commanders, sleeping neglect Ion doth betray to loss the conquest of our scarce cold conqueror, that ever-living man of memory, Henry V. Whiles they each other cross, lives, honors, lands, and all, hurry to loss. Exit Scene 4 Other plains of Gascony enter Somerset, with his forces, an officer of Talbot's with him Somerset. It is too late, I cannot send them now. This expedition was by York and Talbot too rashly plotted. All our general force might with a sally of the very town be buckled with. The over-daring Talbot hath sullied all his gloss of former honor by this unheedful, desperate, wild adventure. York set him on to fight and die in shame. That, Talbot dead, great York might bear the name. Officer. Here is Sir William Lucy, who with me set from our overmatched forces forth for aid. Enter S.I.R. William Lucy Somerset. How now, Sir William? Whither were you sent? Lucy. Whither, my lord? From bought and so Lord Talbot, who, ringed about with bold adversity, cries out for noble York and Somerset to beat a sailing death from his weak legions, and whiles the honorable captain there drops bloody sweat from his war-wearied limbs, and in advantage lingering, looks for rescue you, his false hopes, the trust of England's honor, keep off aloof with worthless emulation. Let not your private discord keep away the levied suckers that should lend him aid, while he, renowned noble gentleman, yield up his life unto a world of odds. Orleans the bastard, Charles, Burgundy, Alonson, Rainier, compass him about, and Talbot perisheth by your default. Somerset. York set him on. York should have sent him aid. Lucy. And York as fast upon your grace exclaims, swearing that you withhold his levied host, collected for this expedition. Somerset. York lies. He might have sent and had the horse. I owe him little duty and less love, and take foul scorn to fawn on him by sending. Lucy. The fraud of England, not the force of France, hath now entrapped the noble-minded Talbot. Never to England shall he bear his life, but dies betrayed to fortune by your strife. Somerset. Come, go. I will dispatch the horsemen straight. Within six hours they will be at his aid. Lucy. Too late comes rescue. He is ta'en or slain, for fly he could not if he would have fled, and fly would Talbot never though he might. Somerset. If he be dead, brave Talbot, then, adieu. Lucy. His fame lives in the world, his shame in you. Excellent scene five. The English camp near Bordeaux enter Talbot, and John his son Talbot. O young John Talbot! I did send for thee to tutor thee in stratagems of war, that Talbot's name might be in thee revived when sapless age and weak unable limbs should bring thy father to his drooping chair. 
but, O malignant and ill-boding stars, now thou art come unto a feast of death, a terrible and unavoided danger. Therefore, dear boy, mount on my swiftest horse, and I'll direct thee how thou shalt escape by sudden flight. Come, dally not, be gone. John, is my name Talbot, and am I your son? And shall I fly? Oh, if you love my mother, dishonor not her honorable name, to make a bastard and a slave of me. The world will say he is not Talbot's blood that basely fled when noble Talbot stood. Talbot, fly to revenge my death if I be slain. John, he that flies so will ne'er return again. Talbot, if we both stay, we both are sure to die. John, then let me stay, and father do you fly. Your loss is great, so your regard should be, my worth unknown, no loss is known in me, upon my death the French can little boast, in yours they will, and you all hopes are lost. Flight cannot stain the honor you have won, but mine it will, that no exploit have done, you fled for vantage, every one will swear, but if I bow, they'll say it was for fear. There is no hope that ever I will stay if the first hour I shrink and run away. Here on my knee, I beg mortality, rather than life preserved with infamy. Talbot, shall all thy mother's hopes lie in one tomb? John, I, rather than I'll shame my mother's womb. Talbot, upon my blessing I command thee go. John, to fight I will, but not to fly the foe. Talbot, part of thy father may be saved in thee. John, no part of him but will be shame in me. Talbot, thou never hadst renown, nor canst not lose it. John, yes, your renowned name, shall fly to abuse it? Talbot, thy father's charge shall clear thee from that stain. John, you cannot witness for me, being slain. If death be so apparent, then both fly. Talbot, and leave my followers here to fight and die. My age was never tainted with such shame. John, and shall my youth be guilty of such blame? No more can I be severed from your side than can yourself, yourself, yourself and twain divide. Stay, go, do what you will, the like do I. For alive I will not if my father die. Talbot, then here I take my leave of thee, fair son, born to eclipse thy life this afternoon. Come, side by side together live and die, and soul with soul from France to heaven fly. Excellent Scene 6 A field of battle alarum, excursions wherein John Talbot is hemmed about, and Talbot rescues him Talbot. St. George and victory. Fight, soldiers, fight. The region hath with Talbot broke his word and left us to the rage of France his sword. Where is John Talbot? Pause and take thy breath. I gave thee life and rescued thee from death. John. Oh, twice my father, twice am I thy son. The life thou gavest me first was lost and done till with thy warlike sword, despite of fate, to my determined time thou gavest new date. Talbot. When from the dolphin's crest thy sword struck fire, it warmed thy father's heart with proud desire of bold deface seat victory. Then let an age, quickened with youthful spleen and warlike rage, beat down Alonson, Orleans, Burgundy, and from the pride of Gallia rescued thee. The ireful bastard Orleans, that drew blood from thee, my boy, and had the maidenhood of thy first fight, I soon encountered and, interchanging blows, I quickly shed some of his bastard blood, and in disgrace bespoke him thus, contaminated base, and misbegotten blood I spill of thine, mean and right poor, for that pure blood of mine which thou didst force from Talb. O T, my brave boy, here purposing the bastard to destroy, came in strong rescue. Speak, thy father's care, art thou not weary, John? How dost thou fare? Wilt thou yet leave the battle, boy? and fly, now thou art sealed the son of chivalry? Fly, to revenge my death when I am dead, the help of one stands me in little stead. Oh, too much folly is it, well I what, to hazard all our lives in one small boat. If I today die not with Frenchman's rage, tomorrow I shall die with Mickle age. 
By me they nothing gain and if I stay, tis but the shortening of my life one day. In thee thy mother dies, our household's name, my death's revenge, thy youth, and England's fame. All these and more we hazard by thy stay, all these are saved if thou wilt fly away. John. The sword of Orleans hath not made me smart. These words of yours draw lifeblood from my heart. On that advantage, bought with such a shame, to save a paltry life and slay bright fame, before young Talbot from old Talbot fly, the coward horse that bears me fall and die. And like me to the peasant boys of France, to be shamed, scorn, and subject of mischance. Surely, by all the glory you have won, and if I fly, I am not Talbot's son, then talk no more of flight, it is no boot. If son to Talbot, die at Talbot's foot. Talbot. Then follow thou thy desperate sire of Crete, thou Icarus. Thy life to me is sweet. If thou wilt fight, fight by thy father's side, and commendable proved, let's die in pride. Excellent scene 7. Another part of the field alarum. Excursions. Enter old Talbot led by a servant Talbot. Where is my other life? Mine own is gone. Oh, where's young Talbot? Where is valiant John? Triumph and death, smeared with captivity, young Talbot's valor makes me smile at thee. When he perceived me shrink and on my knee, his bloody sword he brandished over me, and like a hungry lion did commence rough deeds of rage and stern impatience. But when my angry guard aunt stood alone, tendering my ruin and assailed of none, Dizzy wide fury and great rage of heart suddenly made him from my side to start into the clustering battle of the French, and in that sea of blood my boy did drench his overmounting spirit. And there died my Icarus, my blossom, in his pride. Enter soldiers, bearing the body of John Talbot's servant. O my dear lord, lo where your son is born. Talbot, thou antic death, which laughs us here to scorn, anon, from thy insulting tyranny, coupled in bonds of perpetuity, two Talbots, winged through the lither sky, in thy despite shall scape mortality. O thou whose wounds become hard-favored death, speak to thy father ere thou yield thy breath. Brave death by speaking, whether he will or no, imagine him a Frenchman and thy foe. Poor boy! He smiles, methinks, as who should say, had death been French, then death had died today. Come, come, and lay him in his father's arms. My spirit can no longer bear these harms. Soldiers, adieu. I have what I would have. Now my old arms are young John Talbot's grave. Dies, enter Charles, Alonson, Burgundy, Bastard, L.A. Pucelle, and forces Charles. Had York and Somerset brought rescue in, we should have found a bloody day of this. Bastard. How the young whelp of Talbot's, Raging wood, did flesh his puny sword in Frenchman's blood. Pucelle. Once I encountered him, and thus I said, Thou maiden youth, be vanquished by a maid. But with a proud majestical high scorn he answered thus, Young Talbot was not born to be the pillage of a giggle-out wench. So, rushing in the bowels of the French, he left me proudly, as unworthy fight. Burgundy. Doubtless he would have made a noble knight. See where he lies in Hurst in the arms of the most bloody nurser of his harms. Bastard. H.E.W. them to pieces, hack their bones asunder, whose life was England's glory, Gallia's wonder. Charles. Oh, no, forbear. For that which we have fled during the life, let us not wrong it dead. Enter S.I.R. William Lucy, attended, a French herald preceding Lucy. Herald, conduct me to the dauphin's tent, to know who hath obtained the glory of the day. Charles. On what submissive message art thou sent? Lucy. Submission, dauphin. Tis a mere French word, we English warriors what not what it means. I come to know what prisoners thou hast ta'en, and to survey the bodies of the dead. Charles. For prisoners ask'st thou? Hell our prison is. But tell me whom thou seek'st. Lucy. But where's the great Alcides of the field, valiant Lord Talbot, Earl of Shrewsbury, created for his rare success in arms great Earl of Washford, Waterford, 
and Valence, Lord Talbot of Goodrig and Urchinfield, Lord Strange of Blackmere, Lord Verdun of Alton, Lord Cromwell of Wingfield, Lord Fenival of Sheffield, the thrice victorious Lord of Falconbridge, Knight of the Noble Order of St. George, Worthy St. Michael, and the Golden Fleece, Great Marshal to Henry the Sixth of all his wars. Within the realm of France? Pucelle. Here's a silly stately style indeed. The Turk, that two and fifty kingdoms hath, writes no. Tis so tedious a style as this. Him that thou magnifiest with all these tides, stinking and fly-blown lies here at our feet. Lucy. Is Talbot slain the Frenchman's only scourge, your kingdom's terror and black nemesis? Oh, were mine eye-bands into bullets turned, that I in rage might shoot them at your faces. Oh, that I could but kin these dead to life. It were enough to fright the realm of France. Were but his picture left amongst you here, it would amaze the proudest of you all. Give me their bodies, that I may bear them hence, and give them burial as beseems their worth. Pucelle. I think this upstart is old Talbot's ghost. He speaks with such a proud commanding spirit. For God's sake, let him have them. To keep them here, they would but stink and putrefy the air. Charles. Go, take their bodies hence. Lucy. I'll bear them hence. But from their ashes shall be reared a phoenix that shall make all France afeard. Charles. So we be rid of them. Do with them what thou wilt. And now to Paris in this conquering vein. All will be ours, now bloody Talbot slain. Excellent.